You may have heard other programmers use the word encapsulation. Today, we're going to talk about what it means, why it's not the same as information hiding, and how you can use it to improve your design. Before we dive in, let's first talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare has many classes on web development, programming in Python, software engineering, and software design. At the moment, I'm following Frank Kane's course on data science and machine learning with Python. It's really comprehensive. It contains lessons about statistics, data types, clustering algorithms, decision trees, it covers libraries such as Pandas, basically everything you need to know in order to get started. Skillshare is curated for learning. There are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your creativity today. There are two meanings of the word encapsulation. The first is that we group things in a way that each group represents the essential features of something. For example, a culture document encapsulates a company's beliefs, values, and practices. Or a customer class represents all the data that we consider to be essential for representing a customer in our software system. Let's look at an example. Here I have an example of a very simple customer class. Now there's no way you would at the moment say that this actually encapsulates what a customer represents. It has an ID, it has a name and an email address. You might want to add lots of different fields to this customer class. For example, perhaps we want an address line one, which is a string and we want an address line two as well. And perhaps a zip, let's call that postal code. We're in Europe after all. City, country, and so on, and so on. You're going to reach a point where this list is going to be complete. It's going to encapsulate everything that you want a customer to represent. The second meaning of encapsulation is that it defines boundaries around things. For example, Han Solo was encapsulated in Carbonite by Jabba the Hutt. I still have nightmares about that, by the way. Or you could be encapsulated in prison by the government for wire fraud. So encapsulation in that sense is about restricting access in some way. In code, you can achieve that by making instance variables and methods private or protected. Even though Python is a bit special in that regard because it doesn't allow you to actually restrict access. Concept that's related to encapsulation is information hiding. It's not the same thing though. With information hiding, you hide certain aspects of your code to the outside. You provide an interface, a kind of a black box that other functions, modules, and classes use without having to know anything in particular about how it works internally. For example, let's say your software uses a payment processor, Stripe. You want to be able to do payment processing at various places in your code, but you don't want that code to be dependent on Stripe-specific things. So what do you do? You hide the information. You create a Stripe payment processing module that contains functions for starting a payment, processing refunds, calculating tax percentages, etc., etc. Inside the module, you have all the implementation details, such as which Stripe-specific API calls you should make, authenticating to the Stripe service, extracting the data and transforming it into a format that your application can use, and so on. All the other parts of your code use the Stripe payment processor module that you've built, and they don't need to know anything about the implementation details. That information is hidden. In that sense, the Stripe payment processor module acts as a facade, which is one of the design patterns in the gang of Forbook. Let's look at another example. Here's an ordering example. There's a couple of classes in this file. We have a payment status class, which is an enum, so it's either canceled, pending, or paid. There is a payment status error, which is an exception class, a custom exception class. And we have a line item class that represents a single line on an order. So it has a name, a price, and a quantity. And this also has a property to compute the total price. Then we have the order class, which has a list of these items. And it also has a payment status variable that maintains the current status of the payment of this particular order. And then it has a bunch of methods to do something with the order. This is an example where we're applying encapsulation in that we're providing a boundary. Payment status is marked as a protected 
variable here. You could also make it private, then you'd have to put two underscores in front of it, but let's leave it protected for now. But that means that in principle, you're not supposed to use this outside of the order class or any class that inherits from the order class. I'm also hiding information here about what a payment status actually is. Because if you look at the methods, we have is paid, is canceled, cancel, and pay. And these methods don't get any parameters. They just return a Boolean or they don't return anything at all. So when you use the order class, in principle, you don't need to know anything about how payment status is implemented. Let's say I wanted to change this to an integer value or a string. I would, of course, have to adapt the bodies of the method here, but the user of the order class would not have to know anything about that. Well, unless they were actually accessing this variable directly, which they're not supposed to because it's protected. So there's encapsulation as a boundary. That's what you're seeing here. It's a protected member and there's information hiding because the user of the order class doesn't need to know anything about how a payment status in the order is represented. When you hide information, this doesn't always have to be instance variables of classes. It can be a lot of things. You could also hide methods, for example. Here is, again, the customer class that I showed you a minute ago. I've slightly adapted this class. What I want is if we create a new customer in the system, that the customer automatically receives a welcome email. So I've added a method here, send welcome email, that's defines a subject, a body, and then calls a send email function that at the moment does nothing except print the email to the screen. But the send welcome email method itself is private because you're not supposed to call that explicitly when you're using the customer class. And the way I set it up is, well, customer is a data class, so we have all these fields and then I've added a post in it donder method. So that's what's being called after the customer object has been initialized and these values have been set, then this method will be called and that method in turn sends the welcome email. So here's another example where we're hiding information. We're not sharing that we're sending a welcome email here. And this is even a method that's not supposed to be accessible outside of the customer class. But in this case, we're hiding a method, not an instance variable. What's really interesting is how encapsulation and information hiding relate to design principles. Encapsulation, for example, Providing boundaries, grouping things together is very closely related to cohesion. By encapsulating more things, providing clearer boundaries, you're increasing the cohesion of your software. Information hiding, on the other hand, helps to reduce coupling. It removes dependencies by introducing layers, abstraction layers between the different parts of your code. I did a video already quite a while ago where I talked more about cohesion and coupling. I'll put a link here at the top. So in short, encapsulation and information hiding help increase cohesion and reduce coupling. If you want to become better at software design overall, I've written a guide to help you. It's available for free at aryancodes.com slash design guide. It describes the steps that I go through whenever I design a new piece of software. It's really practical to the point you can apply it directly to the projects you're working on. So arioncodes.com slash design guide. And I've also put the link in the description of this video. Now, before I finish this video, I wanna show you one more example to show the difference between encapsulation and information hiding. So here I have again the order example. So we have the payment status and the payment status error. And the first class here is an order class that has no encapsulation whatsoever. And it also has no information hiding. So this is the most basic case. We simply have an instance variable that's called payment status, it's of type payment status, and that has an initial value of pending. Anybody who uses this class can access the payment status directly and modify it without any issue. And there is also nothing in the class that indicates that you shouldn't do this. There are, there are no boundaries whatsoever. So the information isn't hidden, you can easily access it, and there are no indications that you shouldn't do it. There's no boundary. Then here we have Another order class. This order class is different from this one because it does have encapsulation. Payment status is now a protected instance variable. And we have two methods, get payment status and set payment status. In this class, the internal representation of the payment status, which is an enum, is the same as how you are reading and modifying it from the outside. So there is no information hiding. In this case, if you want to throw away the payment status enum, it means you have to change the internal representation and you're going to have to change these methods as well because they also rely on payment status. There is no information hiding here. 
Here's the third example. And this I've shown you before, where we have the payment status, which is encapsulated, right? It's a protected member variable. And the information about what payment status is internally is hidden by these methods, is paid, is canceled, cancel and pay, because you don't use the payment status enum here, that information is hidden. It also means that if we decide to, for example, change the payment status to something else like a string or whatever, then if you're using this class from the outside, you don't have to change anything. You simply keep calling these methods, but internally we change it. Of course, we need to change the code in this class to no longer use the enum, but from the outside, nothing is going to change. Now we've seen three variants. We have no encapsulation, no information hiding. We have encapsulation and no information hiding. And we have encapsulation and information hiding. The variant we haven't seen yet is no encapsulation, but it has information hiding. Now, is that even possible? Well, it kind of is. I made an example. It's a bit contrived. Let me show you what I mean. So here you have a class order with information hiding and no encapsulation. So the status variable payment status is public again. So there's no boundary actually, but I've changed the type to any and I've set it initially to none. By looking at the class definition or by using the class, you have no idea what payment status actually is. There's no boundary, but the information about what it is, how it's represented is not available to you. It's hidden. And then we still have the is paid, is canceled, cancel and pay methods here that use the payment status enum, but if you're using this class from the outside, you have no idea that this is actually what's happening. And even though there's no boundary here, we don't know what the type of payment status is. The information is hidden. To be clear, the last example is purely theoretical. I'd never advise you to actually write classes like that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video that gave you some food for thought. If you did, give it a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you want to watch more content about software design and development. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.